third phase of who? here third phase of moon incredible interview coming up with robert morningstar from new york city he's a civil analyst uh, over there and also a psychotherapist he has his degree in new york city and also an faa pilot uh, expert in the chinese language and has been studying ufos and the paranormal for over 40 years now he's an editor at ufo digest and written many books and articles on the internet in regards to the JFK assassination and UFO cover-ups. We're going to be going to the moon, though, right now. He's been studying the moon, all kinds of anomalies coming up in photographs that have been captured by NASA themselves, the Apollo missions. Robert Morningstar, welcome to Third Phase of Moon. Thank you very much. It's nice to see you. All right, Robert. Now let's get busy right here on some of these images coming straight from uh, NASA. This image, can you give us uh, some explanation in what you think this is and how did you discover this photograph? Um, if you're talking about the one that I call Big Ben on the Moon, which is that black tower, you may have a blue tinted photograph of it, which is a still photo shot off a 42 inch monitor to get backlighting on a, on a really dark image. However, what it shows is a spire that's in a region of the moon just beyond the Mare Crisium. It's in a region called the Mare Marginis, and it's pretty far north. And this is one of several towers that um, I have uh, discovered, or that, uh, rediscovered, I should say, uh, going over many photographs of Apollo, uh, Lunar Orbiter, uh, NASA photographs and uh, the Russians got my they piqued my curiosity. I sent you a really good example of a Zond 8 photograph which uh, I believe shows how sharp the photography the Russians were using in the 1970s it rivals what NASA releases today. Of course NASA has tremendous resources and uh, even higher resolution than they release. And often when they release a photo, there are uh, missing, uh, missing uh, spaces, uh, blocked out uh, forms. Um, I sent you some last night were color photographs from Clementine that look really great when you look at them from afar. And when, when you zoom in, you start to see blotches and transparencies, uh, including white rectangles over the centers of craters obscuring or uh, blocking out what's inside the crater. So, oh, I've made a habit of looking around in places like that. When I find, a, let's say, something that's been uh, smudged over in one region, I say, well, what are they hiding there? So you start your search for looking for other photographs taken by other spacecraft or other countries, and I found quite a lot of anomalies on the moon. And, my interest over the last few years, I would say the last uh, eight or ten years, has been the far side of the moon. In particular, the region of the Mare Orientale, which is the, the biggest impact crater on the moon. Uh, it's never visible from Earth. And the Russians were the first ones to take photographs of that. Um, back in the early days of the Zahn missions, really grainy stuff. But even then you could see that uh, there were very, very strange formations on the far side of the moon and radically different than what we see on the near side of the moon. The mystery and the exploration continues. Let me ask you, Robert, this, uh, these towers that come up in these photographs, you say there's multiple towers on the moon. Let's go over this in detail and how tall are these structures? Well, you can see from uh, the, the Zond 8, uh, X02 photograph. That's spectacular. That's the whole moon taken in one shot. Uh, really, almost, it's almost the most, it's almost perfect as far as getting the North Pole to the South, south Polar regions, the details, even in the darkest areas at the bottom of the photograph. The Russians captured something of phenomenal in that photograph and there's so much material there and I my, my purpose in, in being on your show besides saying 
how much I admire your show, how entertaining it's been for the last year watching all of your UFO videos, is to encourage people to dive in and do their own research. You know, I'm just one guy, two good set of eyes, but it's just two eyes. And it is in, I encourage people, and I, we now have a network of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of people who are doing this kind of work, and each one is contributing something. Uh, so my purpose is to encourage astronomy clubs and individuals to take up uh, the study of the moon, uh, charting, navigation, learn the craters, and I actually teach, I teach both two things. I teach navigation of the moon, but I also teach remote viewing. And when I teach a remote viewing course, the last, the last class is a group venture to remote view the moon, like Ingo Swan did. If you read his book, Penetration, you'll see Ingo Swan of the uh, Stargate Project succeeded in exploring the moon very, very deeply and methodically for uh, DARPA. And I recommend that book. It's on the internet. It's called Penetration, Ingo Swan, S-W-A-N-N. And um, do yourself a favor, <laughs> expand your universe. <laughs> so that's my purpose of being here. But the, uh, the uh, tower itself, I mean... I was the most surprised person on planet Earth to come upon that photograph. I sent, I sent you know, the first person with whom I've shared the entire uh, Apollo photograph where that tower appears. And that's um, Apollo 17 M2366. And you can't see it. You see the whole moon. You see, uh, well, it's actually about um, the upper third of the moon. And you don't see it until you go in and go right into the horizon. And I was looking at the pictures kind of sideways. You know, I've, I've rectified it. Basically, I put the horizon on a horizontal plane. But the photographs, having been shot from space, they were orbiting the moon. So the moon was here and the spacecraft was going around. So all the photographs have all the black sky here, the curve of the moon here. And so I'm going through and all of a sudden, I see this spire sticking out, if I can show, yeah, the spire sticking out of the, the contour of the moon's, uh, the limb of the moon, and I did a double take, and then I went in, and it's, uh, it's a very beautiful thing to see. I've heard about it for 40 or more, 40 years. When the Apollo astronauts came back in the 70s, yes, they, they clamped down on it, but the lid wasn't as tight. And there was talk and chatter about what they'd really seen, and these things about the towers on the moon had had been in in the uh, the rumor mill, let's call it. But the Russians came up with these on photographs, the Tower of Babel photograph that I've shown you. I've sent it to you. I hope you'll show on the show. That's the white version of the tower. Um, that is amazing, intriguing, and the idea that NASA couldn't find that thing when the Russians have taken three photographs of it and, and <laughs> so we had six missions to the moon. How they didn't see that, I have to ask myself of where were they were looking. But as you can see in the Zond 8 photo, the tower is there casting a shadow much like a sundial. And that one, the one with the insect in the corner where I took it off and enlarged it, that is that tower. If you do your uh, navigation, you know, here's how you do navigation. You take uh, the Mare Orientale, which has a lot of really a very distinct contours, two concentric rings of mountain from the impact, and lay a compass on it, you know, so you choose one point north. And then you do uh, run course from, from the Mare Orientale, run it, a line, a radius from it to your uh, chosen point, then get other photographs where you see a piece of the Mare Orientale and you lay the same compass on it and then you do so you do um, triangulation if you can or at least two lines and then you home in on these things I sent you a four panel uh, composite of something called Ellerman Tower which is one of my favorite discoveries uh, there are four panels one is a Zond 1 the other one is Zond 3 and I think the other one is Zond 8 and then there's a Clementine photo, and it shows you how I saw a very smudgy little mark in a very crude black and white photograph taken by the Russians, and it drew my attention. It just didn't belong there, even in this 
kind of rough, out of focus state. Then I looked for more photos. Then the next mission took a closer photo of it, a, more, a sharper photo with a different light regimen. And then, well, so there's here's I have two pictures. And then years went by, and I got the third picture. And so I'm homing in over years of time. And then so now I know this region, the Element Crater region, which is um, in the southern regions of the Mare Orientale. And then I just chance on this Clementine photo, which was composed of 22 and a half million individual photos. And just, I have this knack, I don't know where it comes from, but I'll just see something, I thumbnail, and click, automatic, without even thinking about it, boom, and what bump jumps out, that tower. I mean, I didn't even have to search the picture. I went flick, zoomed in once, boom, and it's sticking up there, as they say, like a sore thumb. Now, the thing about Element Crater is that the NASA photographs always give you overhead shots of it. And the Russians took slant angle shots of it. And it's kind of like the Devil's Tower, you know, in the movie, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Element, Element Crater rises right up. It's, it's miles and miles high, but they always give you this flat, plain view over the top. But the Russians had taken these slant angles on it. And so on this crater is something that looks like a crater on the rim, but it, it, to me it seems very, it's completely artificial. In the other photographs that I've uh, studied of it, when I enhance the, the tower, let's call one the crater, and then there's the tower that comes out of it. So when I've analyzed that surface, uh, uh, what I would call the satellite dish, area of that tower. It uh, divides pretty evenly into three sections and uh, impact craters don't do that. And so that's one thing that leads me to say that that's artificial and that we haven't been given this, the real picture of, um, of uh, Ellerman Crater yet. But that's the closest one. The slant, the slant view of Clementine photo is excellent. Let me see what else I showed you. Um, I showed you this photos that I've come across in the archives, the Apollo um, 17 surface uh, photos, that strange anomaly in the sky, which some people say is a UFO, a very, very strange and, you know, like damaged construction, perhaps ancient. And I think it may also be, uh, rather than a UFO, the top of a tower. They're so far beyond the horizon that you can't you can't see the bottom, that the sunlight is hitting the top of it, spilling over, but you can't see the bottom of it because it is so far. And there is, if you look at the Apollo um, 17 photo of the Big Ben on the moon, you'll notice that it, it has an incline, it's kind of slanting back. Now that's very important because that incline indicates that that structure is much farther beyond the horizon than, than you think. It's not on the horizon. Were it on the horizon, you would see it vertically. But the moon falls away so rapidly that structures, uh, well, let's say if you're up here looking at a tower in New York, it would be, let's say like this. And if you were a ship going away, you'd see New York sinking slowly under the horizon like that. Well, if you were on the moon, that would happen much more rapidly. And the effect is that a tower that looks like this, looks like that. And so the pitchback is a very important indicator in this photograph that we are not seeing the entire structure. We may be seeing the upper half or the upper two thirds, but we don't know. But it is definitely beyond the horizon in quite a distance. So I'm intrigued by that photograph. I was tempted to call it Empire State Building on the Moon, being from New York. But that big uh, bright light in the center of it reminded me of uh, Big Ben having been there. So I like to use you know, creative titles and things that resonate. You know, you know Robert, what about this uh, Edgar Mitchell uh, photograph? We've had Edgar Mitchell on the show right here at Third Phase of Moon, and he claims he's got insight that there is a cover-up and aliens have visited Earth and they're here. What about this I, photograph? I know Edgar... Well, that photo is one that I discovered uh, studying the Apollo 14 mission to Fra Moro. 
And I actually met Edgar Mitchell in New York in 2007 when he uh, spoke at the Explorers Club. And we stayed in contact. So I came across these photographs that were supposed to be panoramic shots uh, taken on the moon by um, Edgar Mitchell. He was supposed to stand in place and line them up so that they could do a, a room with a panoramic so they could take these movie, uh, photos and join them. Hasselblad's and really giant ones. We were going to have a room where you could walk in and see and feel like you were on the surface of the moon in the Fra Mauro region. But I noticed in the photographs there were two photographs of, of one rock. And the second photograph, the rock was bigger. So I said, well, you know, I know the mission is supposed to be. Why, why, why did he run up to that rock to take the second picture? These were thumbnails, you see? So I was intrigued. Why, why two pictures of the same rock? Why is the second rock bigger? There must have been something of curiosity about that rock that he chose to go from one position and get closer to, to the rock. So I bring up both pictures, and as I brought them both up, I noticed that the difference wasn't really the rock, but something in the sky. And in the second photograph is that object. And I enhanced the photograph, and I shared it with Edgar Mitchell, and he uh, and I and Another astronaut had a talk, I sent it to him, and he said, well, well Robert, there's, there really is something there. And uh, then he offered this uh, explanation. He said, it could be something falling, floating down from the Apollo spacecraft. You know, very tactful answer, but I don't buy it because I've seen that object in other photographs, and it's huge. It's the, the structure, the texture, but the interesting thing is the shape of it. The shape of it is almost like a shoe, the whole, the sole, the contour. I call it a foot, you know, a footprint. It's kind of an odd foot. It's got a curve and a bend in it. So I just call it, it's got a footprint. But I found that photo, that shape in a 1959 photograph taken by an astronomer named Jesse Wilson in which he captured about 34, 36 UFOs leaving the northern section of the moon from the region where Apollo 17 landed in the northern highlands. They, they landed in the Taurus Littrow Valley. So this 1959 photograph by Jesse Wilson shows two sets of UFOs rising, turning, and then flying by that as if that were a space station or a mothership, or some sort of reviewing authority. And I do believe there is an authority on the moon, and it's not us. Absolutely, Robert. And I think, uh, you know, some of these photos that Russia took of these towers, I think NASA's actually captured the same thing. They're just not sharing that with us right now. How could they not? That's why that was my question. It was you know, facetious. You know, how could NASA not find the Tower of Babel when the Russians had already provided, you know, five, at least five photographs of it. And if I deduced where it's located from that, uh, that um, Zond 8 photograph, how hard would it be for an astronaut to scope it out just flying by? You, you can't miss it. They're, they're gigantic. But then again, here's another thing. You can't miss it if you're looking, but all the astronauts had a very, really tight schedule. You know, every second, every minute had this, had this schedule to it, and they were doing their tasking, and what really got to see the views were the cameras that were on, this, these were automatic photographs that were being shot. So, um, by the um, Apollo metric camera, we captured Big Ben on the moon. Wow, Robert, we got a few minutes left right here at Third Phase of Moon. I really want to thank you for joining us, sharing this incredible uh, insight from uh, Chinese presidents to Edgar Mitchell's, you know, thoughts as he's traveling through space. Incredible. And, you know, having an eye out for these things, these strange anomalies, and maybe NASA's hiding something. I'm pretty sure they are. Robert Morningstar, well, any last words here? Well, keep your eyes open and... Uh, do your work, and you have good eyes. I saw you, you picked up those other towers uh, before I told you about them, and that's what I'm saying. Some things are obvious, and you just have to, you have to stand up for your reality. I mean, you know what I mean? For me to say, hey, look, I believe my reality. I don't care what NASA says, you know. If it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. 
you know, that's a tower on the moon. <laughs> Absolutely. No doubt about it. The pictures, the shadows, it's basically smoking gun evidence right there. Robert, how do people get in touch with you? What's your website? Uh, well, the websites, if you want to read uh, material on UFOs or lunar studies and many, many other writers besides myself, it's ufodigest.com. But uh, I'm on Facebook, and that's where you can contact me directly. I have an open page. And I'm the one that has the, the head of a dolphin as the avatar because I espouse the mind of the dolphin. I was involved in a lot of work in artificial intelligence and interspecies communication long ago. I continue it today. So the dolphin is, is a good guy. And uh, that's how you recognize me on Facebook. And the other one is the avatar. Uh, next to the avatar is the photo of a structure that I call the Sentinel. And three photographs of that structure were taken by Apollo 10. And NASA says that it's a one and a half foot piece of mylar. So I would like you to go to my website and see if you believe that that's a one and a half foot piece of mylar. Well, that's it, everybody. Third Phase Moon, Robert Morningstar. Thanks again for joining us again. Thank you. Third. Bye. Well, that's it, people. Uh, everybody, keep your eyes on the skies. And if you captured anything incredible, submit it to Third Phase of Moon via Skype, Facebook. We're here standing by. I'm Blake Cousins. We'll see everybody again next time. Phase of the Moon.